You're almost like the um, the rugby version of Russell Brand, I reckon. Hello and welcome to Rugby Pass Offload at me, Christina Mahan. And today I'm joined by Ryan Wilson, Simon Zebo, and one of the most famous faces in the Premiership in Bristol Bears prop, Max Lahif, whose viral videos this season have brought a smile to everybody's face. So welcome to the show, Max. And how are you guys doing? Oh, good. Max, Max is straight yeah. out of the gym. Look at him. I know I'm perspiring liberally. I apologize for that. <laughs> I'm just getting strange. I had to just tick over the legs, just get away sticks all day. You know, it's just before pre-season when it's about to get really quite difficult. So, Are you yeah. not in pre-season yet? No, nah, not yet. Uh, next week, next Monday, first Bronco. Oh, Ooh, ominous. Yeah. You could just smell it. It's already coming. Hold on, Max, before we start, <laughs> can you stand up and show me what shorts you're wearing? Please be oh, the jeans. Okay. Please be the denim shorts. Please be the denim shorts. <laughs> yeah! Hey! yeah! The Daisy Hold on jeans. a minute. He... Zeeves, if you haven't followed this man on Instagram yet, he, no, squat, he squats in those things. I go away. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> They're what wonderful. Is if you can't squat in any trousers you're wearing, you shouldn't buy them. That's always my, my go-to on shorts and, and trousers. Oh, bloody hell. Right, I'm, well, I'm, all good. I'm all good anyway. I'm all good anyway. Just to back off the Bronco. How did yeah. the Bronco go? What'd you get? I got um, just under five minutes. 4.59 was my target for myself, actually. I actually said there's a joke, 4.59, and I got 4.59, so happy with that. But um, target's 4.40 in the club, which, as you boys discussed just a minute ago, is absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, I'd take that any time. I heard in Scotland, though, it's weird. Like Even the props are savage runners. Yeah, a lot of them are. They were a pretty fit team. See, you boys wouldn't have done a Bronco over in France, would you? We did, yeah, we did. Now... There would have been a few freaks who have been getting four twenties and four fifteens and stuff. But then there was the other end of the spectrum where you'd have the six minute tens, six minute twenties. Were uh, you in there? No, no, thankfully not. I can run to be fair. But weights and stuff, no. But uh yeah, yeah. The, we did the Bronco about five or six times. Mm. Oh, it's a horrible test. I it's a horrible test. Bloody hell. Yeah, yeah. Is that the worst part of preseason for you guys? Is that the thing that you look forward to the least? I think the whole yeah. of it's pretty awful, but yeah, because yeah. it's only five, like five minutes work. So, but it is there's a lot can happen in five minutes, I suppose. Yeah, <laughs> Do you know what I mean, you're like oh, okay. five minutes. Next minute, you're drowning yeah. in lactic acid. You're like, yeah. oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. There's no, there's honestly no. It's, I think it's the build up to it as well. See, like the whole, your, my mind just all morning, and they didn't put it on till half twelve. So we were sat all morning just stressing about it. Oh, just no. want to get in, get it done with. But yeah. no, half twelve, like just stressing, stressing, stressing. So uh, no, I'm, um, I'm glad it's over, over for now anyway. Yeah, it's a good time to. All to look forward to for myself. Yeah, good luck, man. Yeah, best of luck with that. Well, look, Max, you've become famous for your crazy pre and post match interviews. So, can you give us a bit of an insight into how they came about? And also, what's the favorite one that you've ever delivered? Um, <laughs> I suppose they came about just because here I, I just kind of, in a weird way, as I as I got older in my career, I've just sort of, you know, when we first get into a place, you sort of. You're a little bit shy. It's quite a, it's quite a dominant dominant male environment. So you're sort of like you're checking yourself a little bit. You want to just fit in with the lads, make sure you don't jump on any kind of toenails. And um, but as I've grown older, I sort of don't I care I care less for it, you know. So you just bring more of yourself out there. And um, here at Bristol, I've been able to do that completely because the culture is so good for that. Because there's so many eclectic characters here. And me and Thomas Taint and the media manager just have a great rapport. So when he came up and started interviewing me, my, my whole goal is just to try and make him chuckle when we're doing interview. And before I knew it, all these kind of phrases were rolling off. It was probably that Wasp one. That one flowed the best, that Wasp pre-match. But I did a few before that, which were a lot of fun. Breathe Away was a good one as well. Um, but yeah, it's just something I quite like doing, like evoking emotion in other people, trying to get some chuckles here and there. It's all good crack. <laughs> was the wasps one? That's the one that went viral. You got a bit, what was it, yeah. two and a half million views? Yeah, oh, that geez. got weird. Yeah. <laughs> got weird. It got weird. Well, what uh, were the weirdest, what were the weirdest offers and messages that you got off the back of that video? Um there was a 
a pre-match like speech for a poker tournament that was interesting and then there was also a I did like a sports bible reaction video to rugby clips that had gone wrong that was quite good fun um and then I got like a I did a BT um commentating role against Leicester which went down poorly in Leicester but quite well here in Bristol <laughs> <laughs> I was like the most hated man in Leicester. Like, Who is this? Sam <laughs> Charlton. Saying we're evil. Oh, it was awful. I was like, I had anxiety after that. I thought some Leicester people were going to come, come find me. But yeah, it was oh. quite good crack. I enjoyed myself immensely. With Rupert Cox, a good, good, had, really good fun. You've had plenty of practice on the Instagram. I watched your, your cooking stuff, like from ages ago, because obviously myself and Max have a, some friends that know each other as well. But... Your, even your cooking stuff, man. Oh my god, I used to just crack up at it. <laughs> yeah, the cooking, the cooking was the is the, the original outlet where I just started practicing, sort of putting on this strange persona, like a weird unhinged David Attenborough of food. And yeah. Um, yeah, I love cooking, so I was like, why don't why don't we just get this out there? Because I was doing the odd cooking thing every now and again and just throwing quotes in, and then I just got strange and just developed this kind of strange alter ego. And do you kind of plan, say, for those interviews, do you kind of plan ahead of time what you want to get out there or does it literally just come to you on the spot? Um, most of the time, I it, that time it came very much on the spot, yeah. Like, I have a few, like, phrases I definitely go to with certain, like, places and players and stuff like that. But I'll be ready for the next one, put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Oh man, yeah, there's some words getting thrown in there that I haven't got a clue what they mean. You, it's almost like you're almost like the um, the rugby version of Russell Brand, I reckon. You know, like where he oh, goes take that. so yeah. deep and starts throwing stuff out, and he confuses everybody. Yeah, yeah um, he's he's an interesting character. You must have done Ryan, the right there, English, Max. Are there any words um, that you want to run past Max now, Ryan? No, you've got to watch them. I wouldn't have a clue what often were now. I'm I'm sure you make most of them up anyway. Oh, there's a little bit of ad lib, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Bastardising the English language. <laughs> right, well, your rugby career has taken you to all four corners of the globe and you played for the Melbourne Rebels out in Australia for a season. So what was that experience like? It was interesting. I remember when I first got to Melbourne, I was surprised by, like, how, comparatively to the Prem, how, like, sort of behind it was professionally. So we were training at the time in a in Carlton Football Club, like one of the AFL teams, in the refs. So the refs had their own like facility, like a gym, the whole shebang. And we were training in there. It was just quite, I was just, I because when you see Super Rugby back then, like when it was Super 14, the um, production I thought was really good. But then when you get to Australia, you realize it's quite like, well, it's competing for like space with NRL and AFL, which are both probably more popular. Than, than rugby union over there. So like when I got there, it was sort of waning from where it had been. Um, so that was, a, that was weird, but, the, um, but the, the culture in terms of like personalities and stuff, Australians are amazing, just zealous for life. I loved it, like so many, <laughs> so many loose, loose characters. It was great crack and Melbourne is a hell of a city. Oh my God, mm. TD in the best kind of way, my gosh really metropolitan like amazing food really really um it's not like too big that you can't it's not like london where it's sprawling you can get around it's very very good but the rugby itself we had a really good team but it was just so young so we sort of battled we were getting pumped here and there but um it was there was some amazing talent there yeah what was the you kind of touched off there but i want to know like what was that rebels culture like you know how did how well did things get after a victory you know what did a typical night out look like like I want to know it all <laughs> so most most Fridays were our home games so we'd always have the weekend off and like the average age of the team was like 23 and we were in Melbourne it was nutty so we were just flying into it the whole weekend it was unreal and you could see Tony McGann was head coach at the time and he was just scrambling for control so our weeks of training were savage he was just on us because he knew what we were up to and um <laughs> our captain at the time was like scott higginbotham hell of a boy like he'd be going down to bell's beach on the weekend for a surf like nonchalant laconic character really really lovely guy but we had some unbelievable units geordie reed he loved it he lived hard now at uh, gloucester hell of a season from him 
Sean McMahon, wow, wow, wild man in the best kind of way, <laughs> in the very best kind of way. Incredible player, but he's, um, you don't get to see much from now because he's in Japan, but it was class, absolute class, yeah. Well, you just mentioned he was a wild man. So in what way? Like, I want the details. I want some story. Oh like, you gosh, have to you tell us stories. I want the nitty gritty. You have to tell us some stories. Um, you can't just throw out Max, some names. Max, was, was Luke Jones in that group as well? Oh my, yeah, Luke Jones was probably the most mature guy out of all of the characters, oh, really? you know. <laughs> yeah. And, and Zeeb thinks he's mental. Oh <laughs> my God. Yeah, he's, mate, he was the suave, good looking lock. Yeah. yeah. He was, um, he was definitely the most mature, but he had all the networks. He had like the whole nightlife on his back, hand, yeah, on the back of yeah. his hand, just getting us in left, right, and rhubarb. <laughs> it was class. No, Shawnee McMahon's just like, <sighs> wow. Well, he's just feral. So anything he does, he goes 100%. So you can imagine when he's getting inoculated on the finest alcohol, it's the same. But when he's training, it's the same as. He's just a, so savage. Mm. I was like, I remember the first time I trained with him, I was like, because he came from Simmons, I hadn't really heard of him. And he was just running through everyone. like, And it wasn't much to him at the time. He was just pure will, just bumping humans off left, right, and center. It was unbelievable. And we would have the preseason in Australia, lads is a different gravy. So before the NRC, there was only Super Rugby. So it would just go on forever. Like, Jesus. it was so long. By the time we got oh, out of there, I was like, I don't even want to play rugby anymore. It was crazy. And it was like, drills like King of the Hill in 40 degrees heat, just wrestling Le Petit Tamani for dominance. <laughs> just a Tong and Warlord of the finest, finest calibre. Mate. You look like you love it though, Max. Mm. Like, you... I, you... <laughs> One of those guys who loves preseason. Yeah, yeah <laughs> way bad. Not this kind of preseason. Uh, Australia's different, man. It's run first, everything else later. Yeah, true. true. Oh, man. They can run for days. Mm. Unbelievable scenes. Yeah, so Max, you're, you you're more of a weights, man. Yeah, absolutely. You know this, Ryan. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah, I know. That's, <laughs> that's, you know, I'm a bit like it as well. You know, these shoulders and that. Yeah, arms, I just want to hear. The slopes. Yeah. yeah, the slopes. <laughs> the slopes. Shoulders, shoulders like a Coke bottle, old boy. <laughs> oh, look at that. Poor me, eh? I they work long though, that's what counts, right? They work. Well, well, I don't know if they do. I don't know if they do. That's the problem. <laughs> oh, oh, Max, brilliant. do you have, have you heard of any good stories about Cipriani's escapades when he was playing over there? Do you have any, any so, dirt on him now? Right? So Danny, mm. Danny Cipriani, so I got there when he left, but he had this, there was this um, group of them called the Rat Pack. This is this, this is second, this is secondhand information, by the way. You can't, I don't know how much of truth there is to this, but I'm just going off what I've got. Um, it was Buddy Franklin, famous AFL player, hell of a boy. Um, Curtly Beale, hates a drink. Um, James O'Connor, <laughs> old, old, old Jimmy O'Connor. <laughs> he was a nightmare. Justin Bieber of rugby back then. Yeah. And, um, and Sips, and they were just, oh, they owned the place. But I didn't hear any like exact stories, but um, yeah, it was all crazy. Like they could just do what they want, oh, essentially. The press just let them do it. Can you imagine those lot? Can you imagine those four just taking what they wanted at will? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> And it's like oh, Cipriani's so charismatic and charming. It's, it's, oh, yeah, it was a nightmare. And he was obviously off the back of like his massive rep. And Australia is like a weird place because it's still kind of small. So, like, it's just still a bit of a who's who. Um, mm. And he was right at the top of the old social pyramid there. So, oh. he must have been loving life. What was the best initiation you've ever been involved in? Was it in Bath, Bristol, or Melbourne? And what took place? Oh, no, it was in, um, Hawks Wellington Beck. College. <laughs> Wellington <laughs> College in the quad, boy. Run for your life. <laughs> so um, it was at Hawks Bay. So Carl Lowe and Chris Eaton were the court courtroom judges. It was the most draconic thing I've ever been a part of. I was terrified for my life. I was only 23 at the time, and it was just all these sort of really, really gnarly New Zealanders. And it got strange. Like you had to just like you had to do exactly what was said and I was completely submissive I was just a little 23 year old pommy from from London <laughs> and straight it, out of Wellington <laughs> College whatever they said you did like Chris Heaton was a psychopath and Carlo <laughs> was not a man to be trifled with and um 
I was just like, you just, there was a bin in the middle, just sit, sit round, ring of fire, just sit round the bin and drink. And t- it was like waterboarding yourself with endless beer, just <laughs> regurgitation, oh, left, right, and rhubarb. Man. Then we had to do like a naked thing around a rug- rugby pitch where it was like the naked like lap. And at each, at each corner, there was like some incredible, incredible cocktail of death. And you'd have to see that off whilst running completely blind uh, I was uh, I've I woke up in a fountain the next day opposite where I was staying in uh, Napier it was it was hard that was definitely the toughest thing I've ever done well look you were signed to Bristol by Pat Lamb last year and you guys have had well you were incredible in the league but then tend to have a bit of a bad habit of falling apart in the big playoff games so can you kind of talk us through what went wrong in the semi-finals this year oh, um I think looking back at it, I think we just going into that half time, I thought we maybe we just got a little bit nonchalant and gave it to and then they just came back hard like Quinn's the way they play, they're just dangerous from anywhere. So we just um yeah, maybe we just got a little bit a little bit too chill. Like 28 28 7 it was pretty much, but 28 nil essentially. Like Don Brand got a lucky charge down. And then um it was, it looked wrapped up to us. Like, that's how I feel. And then when Harry Randall's um, try got called back, I just could, you could just see the, the sort of psychology change. And Quinns don't need that. They do not need that. They got, they got strange and weird and just brought it home in the end. Unbelievable semi. I've never seen anything like it. It was crazy. Um, but yeah, fair play to them. Unbelievable season. Like the final and- of the semi. Well, now you do get to train and play with one of the greatest players in in world rugby. Um, semi is it Rajradra? I... Rajradra, yeah, he's the man. Oh, how incredible is he as a player? Oh, you know what's really nice about him though—he's just a wonderful bloke as well. Like consummate professional as well. Like he's doing these like private yoga sessions for like forty-five minutes with his majestic beard, just felt like a boomer, just life. But um. <laughs> Yeah, he's a freak show. It's like playing rugby with Harry Houdini. You can't get your hands on on him. Mm. Yeah, but um, really nice guy. Freakish feet, though. They scare me. Like these feet, I've never seen any kind of feet like it. Whenever he gets them out, I'm like bunions, like planets. It's not good. Can't be good. <laughs> Sass watches. Yeah. Do um, you think he was talking about fast feet? There, I thought he was talking about sidestepping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh no, no. <laughs> Those are also very, very elusive. But. Yeah. <laughs> Man, the feet freak me out. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> they, they've got some very, they got some very thick soles, eh? I've, the Fijians yeah, no. up here, yeah. like they, the they walk around, foot. Yeah. walk around Glasgow like barefoot, like down the road. Oh. Like, put some shoes on, man. He's like, oh, it's okay, yeah. brother. It's okay. Yeah. It's, 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 That's it's Nico, on. is it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm like, put <laughs> some on, man. Hey, babies, it's fine. Don't worry. Hey, babies. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but Sebi's funny. Like, like shouts out these. Italian curses like mamma mia all the time it's weird but it's it's wonderful <laughs> that's the one really thing like guys. for jizz no matter how good they are no matter how much they get paid they're the most humble blokes in the world I absolutely yeah, no, love every team yeah. meeting mate even yeah. him and his what, what's his Mustang he's got a Mustang hasn't he yeah. what's, <laughs> what's the number nice. what's the number plate semi red yeah something like that it's nutty he's gone big uh, he's gone very big on that puppy does Nico them... did the same Nico got a Maserati <laughs> <laughs> He did that. Yay! <laughs> oh, he just revs it around make... the car park like that. <laughs> yeah, he'd love that. Oh, what a boy. Nico does... Matawalu. Oh. Um, come here, does Semi enjoy a night out or is he just, is he very much a man who likes to carve and chill with the other Islanders? Yeah, he's carver and chill. Absolutely. Um, yeah, actually, speaking of, you know, I haven't seen him on a night out yet. Have to get him out. He's, he's he's disappeared off the Tokyo camp for seven, so won't be seeing him for a while yet. They're dangerous when they drink the Fijians. <sighs> yeah, they can get they can get rambunctious, can't they? <laughs> they just don't. They just don't stop. They just don't no, they stop. Don't. They just like, keep going. Oh, we better go find him now. We started on Monday. Wednesday yeah. has come round. Have no idea where he's got to. <laughs> Oh man! Oh dear. Well, look, rugby grounds or rugby training grounds are a hotbed for aggression and the whole alpha mentalities. So, I would like to know what was the craziest training ground bust up that you've ever witnessed? 
there was one good one between Corbusier and Dylan Armitage that got frisky back at Irish. And this was like my first sort of taste of pro rugby. And um, I think Corbs just knew Dylan would throw hands at a moment's notice if he's irate. And um, he went. He went first. He was like, "I'm going to get in first quickly before the quick hands come at me from Dilo. And um, it all got broken up. But that was tasty. Another one was um, actually Irish was pretty nutty. Bob Casey, uh, Nick Kennedy, that got good. But Bob can't throw any kind of hands. Kendo had him all day, but that was tasty. <laughs> um, banners, who, li- who likes the scrap? Who likes the scrap at Bristol? At Bristol. <laughs> There's not been anything good yet. Actually, John Ofoa got a bit hands-on with one of the young academy boys, Fitzy. That was that it put him in his place. Yeah, I've never seen John lose his head, but when it gets to like the live units, he can get a bit testy. So he's just um, moving bodies, throwing Fitzy on the floor. But Fitzy's one of those like real hard poshies. He just loves it, gets it in, and just fuels him. That's um, just 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 John Ofoa giving him like life lessons. Yeah, just letting him, yeah letting him know character building. Yeah, exactly. Um, no, another one, oh, Matt Banahan and uh, Tom Dunn. That was class because punching Tom Dunn's like punching a, like a granite pillar, and Banners was just flying into him, <laughs> trying to see him off. He was just maiming his own hand. But How Banners are these just... all kicking off? Like, what's the what's happening just before, like before <sighs> handbags are thrown? Is it just usually it's just like in the breakdown, someone's a bit too nausy, you know, pulling someone here and there. Um, there's certain characters who like it more than others. At the time, Tom Dunn was just so hungry for first team rugby. So he's just into everything. And like some of the first teamers are obviously just try going through the motions, making sure they're, they're good to go. And then you've got like kamikaze academy players trying to make their name, yeah, just throwing themselves willfully into the line of fire. A lot of it starts in touch, eh? It's touch, and then yeah, people, touch, it slowly yeah. gets the shoulder on, and then it's the, body in front, just, yeah, body in front, and then body it, someone front. takes it too far, and Nick and it both, it all kicks yeah. off. Test match, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and there's always the one guy, the escalator. We always called them. Ah, uh, yes, Tom done the escalator. Nick minute, yeah, everyone's just going for it. Uh, good times. Um, but I suppose at the moment, or what is it? So all three tests have been, it's been announced that all three tests are now going to be played in Cape Town at sea level. So Zebo, how big an advantage is that for the Lions that they don't now have to play at altitude for the tests? Big time, yeah. That'll be um, a lot closer to... Sorry. Uh, my kids are screaming outside. <laughs> Um, oh, that's not that's just a street you live on yeah it's Simon Tebow out there look at there he <laughs> no, is no. look at Simon Tebow <laughs> not at all not at all <laughs> sorry yeah um, no I think it'll be um, it'll be very good for the Lions um, you can do all the training and all the practice in the world you want before going into altitude but as soon as you get there it always hits the system completely differently that first 20 minutes you know if it's car crash stuff it um, I've only done it once or twice before myself, but it's it is very very hard. It's a completely different ball game. So to have it at sea level, to to be able to play at uh, altitude that they're used to will will only benefit the Lions for sure. And now you've got a dwindling South African squad with only what is it? Well, could you count well two games under their belt uh, in two years now while playing their games in Cape Town? Are the odds forever in favour of the Lions for a series win, or after the game yesterday? Are you all rethinking that? Max, did you watch the game yesterday? Oh, yes, I really did. Yeah, it was awesome, though. I really enjoyed they, it. They didn't look rusty, did they? No, I oh. thought they looked... I thought they were good to go. Yeah. yeah. No, there was no ring rust from them. Like, they were, like, round the corner, stop us if you can. Every break, that was an absolute war zone. It was class. Oh, I was loving yeah. it. Dan Staden looked class. The back row for South Africa were juicy. Um, but, yeah, I... I like it's going to be a hell of a test series. I'm so. I'd be, I'd be worried for the Lions, eh? After that, I genuinely looked at it and thought, like the way they they they're only going to get better. Like there was the commentators were saying, weren't they? That oh look, they're they're starting to blow a few of their players have had COVID. Yeah, so they're being affected by it. And then you thought, no, they just kicked on and we're all right. And so it'll be beneficial to them if they move it all down to Cape Town as well. So. Now, I, I, I'll be honest, I'm starting to get a bit worried for the Lions, personally. I think that the South Africans proved that they weren't rusty yesterday and they're only going to get better when they had the rest of the squad in. 
Were people yeah, saying pretty... that the Lions were the favourites? Is that it? Is that yeah, but I would have thought they were the favourites. The yeah, Lions but... already. Oh, really? I would have thought the opposite. Really? Oh, really? You... What, because yeah. they didn't have much international rugby since the World Cup? Yeah. No, I, I just thought South Africa were the, you know, so home dominant team. at the World Cup, the home team. Now there's no fans there, but um, knowing their coaching staff as well a bit, I would have thought they would have been big favourites going into Oh, this. no, that's what I mean. Yeah, no, I agree with you. Yeah, oh, they're sorry, already yeah. big favourites, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hmm. Ridiculous well, team. Yeah. I think the um, I think the Lions have been pretty lucky to avoid any major COVID scares in camp so far. But obviously there has been some bad news for Finn Russell, who suffered an Achilles tear, which may now rule him out for the rest of the tour. So, Zeebs, if he's ruled out, how big a blow would that be for the Lions? Um, it would be a huge blow, but I think he'd be all right. Um, um, I think he's supposed to be back. I was chatting to him the other day. He's supposed to be back training the week of the first test. So that yeah, next Monday I think he'll be available to train fully. So um, that's good for the Lions. It would be a huge blow. Marcus Smith, who who flew out recently, is a class player himself. Um, um, but yeah, I think Finn would be a huge blow uh, to the Lions' chances, especially seeing how they they tried to play against um, South Africa the other day. They they had a bit of variation from wit to kicking the ball, and I just think if they wanted if. They would have done better, I think, if they had Finn on the pitch to to whip that ball around and move those big forwards a bit more. So it would have been a big blow, but hopefully he'll be back next week. If Finn doesn't recover for the test match, who would you have starting at 10? Um, uh, bigger? Big Rye bigger? Yeah. Um, I, would, I would go with bigger if Finn wasn't yeah. back. Me, me and Zeebs are hard for Finn, by the way. Yeah, oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very hard, a bit hard for Finn. We're team Finn. We want him playing, but um, mm. obviously there's a lot of people that come on in and said, "No, no, no, he shouldn't be starting." But it, I, I, I don't think he will start. Sadly, um, but I think if Finn was out, then yeah, bigger will bigger will end up starting. I don't think Owen Farrell had that great a game. I still yeah. think he, he did, there was yeah, know, he wasn't a couple of errors that led to tries and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, so and I think a few people in the game yesterday ruled themselves out of selection, and then there was a couple of blokes that put their hands up like that. Is it Adam Beard, the second row? He was unbelievable. He was so good when he came on. Yeah, people um, were loving him, weren't they? I mean, he yeah, was. Yeah, but he was. He, it's just the way he got around the field, and then obviously we'll move on to the talk of Alan Wynne Jones coming back into the squad. But even like Maratoje finally looked like he hit a bit of form and. He was just all over the place, wasn't he? Like back to his gnarly yeah, nuisance. Complete gnaws. Yeah. Unbelievable troll. Incredible stuff. I well, thought Tom Curry Dan... was epic though. Oh, Tom, Tom yeah. Curry. Again, yeah. Tom Curry. Like, have they played Tom Curry and Hamish Watson together yet? No, I don't think so. That should that should happen though. That should happen. That should happen. I'll tell you another person that I've really I was excited to see in there, Sam Simmons. And you just haven't really noticed. Oh, yeah, I know there. it's gutting, isn't it? Like mm. he just he hasn't really got that space and opportunities that he does it get at Chiefs. Is that why he wasn't picked for England? Like you suddenly see him that's yeah, the reason. Like, is it the game plan they play? But yeah, I feel a bit like I don't know if he's had enough opportunity, but every time I've watched a game, I've just not really gone. I've seen I've seen him come on and be like, yeah, here we go. Gonna watch him bowl some people and carry well. And, and you're just sort of like, oh no, no, he's not done a massive amount there. Is so, it a bit? Um, would it be would it be a bit overwhelming for him? So obviously, like he hasn't well, he doesn't have an international test under his belt, and now he has to step up um and play for the Lions. So do you think he's kind of in his head a little bit and he's trying too hard or Zeeps? I mean, he has, he has, has he played for England? Yes, has he? He has a few caps for England. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's got a few him. from against Italy. He scored like a hat. Yeah, yeah he's, he's got, got a couple. Yeah, one or two. Yeah. yeah. So Ronald Agar has had his say and stated that he was disappointed in Dan Bigger's performance over the weekend. He said that Dan kicks the ball too much and he doesn't see space as well as Farrell. Do you guys agree with him? Yeah, I don't. I think Farrell and himself are still a little bit similar. So maybe the contrast should have been against Russell. But yeah, I don't know. Would you, seems, would you prefer to see Marcus Smith in ahead of Farrell? Basically, would you prefer to see anybody in ahead of Farrell? No, no, not that. I just, I just think the way that to beat South Africa isn't to kick the ball and try and beat them through the forwards. You have to play with a bit of width, a bit of tempo, and a ten who will threaten the line. 
not just pivot pass and throw the ball out to the to the outside back. So someone like Finn, Marcus Smith, um, yeah, an attacking running ten as opposed to a kicking ten. He, he almost ended up as that, didn't he? Like you said, just the pivot. He was like really deep. They so many pivot swing the ball out as as deep yeah. as they could to him, and he had just put it to Chris Harris, who mm -hmm. isn't a massive distributor of the ball. So yeah. it was quite a strange one. But like you said. The South Africans were coming up pretty hard as well. Finn mm -hmm. put Finn in that situation. Little dinks in behind, little yeah. show and go. Finn will cut them apart if they start trying to do that to him. So, yeah, you're right on that. I mm. think I, I agree with your thought on Farrell there. Yeah. I mean, I'd love what to about, see him. What about, um, was it the right call to bring up Marcus Smith to the squad ahead of, say, someone like Johnny Saxton? Go on, Max. I, mean, I like it. Dirt in there. Go on, Max. I mean, Marcus Smith's unbelievable at the moment. Mm. He's King Midas. He's got hands like Jesus. Incredible player. <laughs> <laughs> He's a freak show. I mean, everyone's talking about like, oh, what's going to be like at the next level with space? And obviously Canada and USA aren't exactly great case studies to like talk about international caliber. But you've got to get, oh, I'm just, I think he's, yeah. Going forward, you can just see it. Like his will to win is unreal. And he's mm. got like the skill set to match. I think it's such him. an do we know the story of what happened there? Was, did he literally find out as he came off the pitch for England that he was yeah, in yeah. the Lions squad? So yeah. That's what Richard Hill, Richard Hill was the one who like gave him the news, I think, as he came off. Was it true that Eddie knew the night before, but he didn't tell him just because he wanted him to focus on the game at hand? And then obviously the news broke then while he was playing. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, me and Eddie aren't that tight. I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> but... But I that that's pretty cool, eh? Imagine coming off the, the pitch playing, you know, playing for England and then being told that in front of all your teammates. Like you saw them all giving it the lions, lions. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So good. Yeah. It would be mental and bless him. You can see he said, I think I read a thing where he said I was just shaking. I didn't know what to do. So that's pretty cool for a young guy. And uh, I think, yeah. Um good question. Would you bring in Sexton over him? Seems. What do you make it? What did you make of that? That um, Marcus got the call up ahead of of Johnny. Yeah, I I can understand. You know, he's he's young and he's an attacking, an attacking ten who's just won the Premiership. You know, so his credentials are pretty legit as well. To be fair, but if you're going off the Six Nations, which would put yourself in the shop window the most, you'd think leading into a Lions tour, then it's pretty harsh on Johnny, considering he would be probably the best and informed ten there. Um. But yeah, maybe they're going with some youth exuberance and, you know, some attacking flair, which would be different to the way Johnny plays the game. And I suppose, you know, they know the way Johnny plays the game and it wouldn't be too dissimilar to Bigger or Farrell. So bringing in someone like Marcus Smith, you know, changes it up and shuffles it up a bit. And it's a different uh, point of difference, I suppose. For, so like, like for like, I suppose, for Finn, mm. it's a bit more similar to exactly. Finn. Mm. Yeah. Has Sexton been playing for Ireland over the last few weeks? No, no, he's, yeah. Yeah, he hasn't. He's, he's, so he's uh, been on the piss for four weeks. So he's, he's going to... He's, <laughs> he's been on the piss for four weeks. He's going to come in in terrible, Nick. So that's why. They're going, no, he's yeah. absolutely wrecked. Yeah. Have you so spoken that, to Johnny Zeebs? No, not, not since the initial squad was released, yeah. And he's back okay. at Munster now. He's not allowed to talk to him anymore, remember? I can't speak to him now until he's in Irish camp. <laughs> I'm surprised yeah. you even do the podcast with me again. Now you're back at Munster. <laughs> I think that's what he was trying to do on Tuesday where he conveniently forgot. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. I was actually with Andrew Conway and Keith Earls. <laughs> but not let the boys find that. out. <laughs> no, do you know, know if any of the Munster boys like would listen to this podcast? Each? Have they said anything to you about it? Yeah, they see the clips and stuff on social media, yeah. And they're, they're always on to me. Oh, your man Winston sounds like some gold. <laughs> <laughs> Let's give him some clickbait, baby. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> what is your okay. Oh, dear. Well, look, there has been some very, obviously, there's been some very, very positive news about Alan and Jones returned to the squad. So having been initially ruled out from the tour, the man has made such a miraculously quick recovery that he's now en route to join up with the squad. Now, with the second rows who've replaced him impressing, impressing so much, would you guys put him straight back into the team over the guys that have been doing the work out there? Brian, I'll give it to you. Cool. Uh, I, like, like I said, I, I, I think Beard played really well, played himself into at least a bench spot. Um, I think Atoje played really well again. 
Ian Henderson's pretty solid. Um, I think the one that's got some work to do would probably be Johnny Hill. Um, mm. I don't know. It'd be tough, eh? But I suppose you look at was uh, you know do they want do they want Alan Wynne Jones in as captain on the field? But mate, that that shoulder ain't right. We all know that if you dislocate your shoulder, it's happening again. Properly, yeah, it's, it's coming out again. So <laughs> yeah. you're, he's putting the team at risk a little bit, I'd say. And yeah. I, I, I think they'd make the right call when it came to it. But he knows this is my last chance. I'm just going to get there, and if it pops out again, it pops out. But then he's going to be a bit of a hindrance to the team, isn't he? A complete hindrance. Yeah. So, so you don't see him. Would it, so then would it be the wrong decision to start him? Like, would he be just more? Has he become a person that potentially comes off the bench then? Because you can't. No, you've, you've, got got you've got to start him. You have to start him. Yeah. You've got to start him. But what if he gets yeah, injured? Yeah, because then if he gets injured, you can put someone on. Yeah. Whereas if you bring him off the bench, then you can't put someone in. Oh he gets yeah, injured. then if he gets injured, yeah, yeah, yeah but she sure wouldn't have him involved at all. Sure, then sure, really. Well, that's if that was, yeah, if that's what you're doubting, then would you just you wouldn't run the risk of putting? But it's not spot, like you're you? playing against a team like Japan or something who notoriously chop players at the knees. You're playing against South Africa who are way oh. bigger than you. <laughs> they are just going around. If they find out that you have yeah. a shoulder, Rezzy and Jack, oh my yeah. God, they would Mate, happily I, take a yellow card to mess poor, you up. Poor old Ken Owens. What about <laughs> Ken Owens having to take those five meter taps like twenty times yeah. in a row? Yeah. <laughs> take the scrum. <laughs> Shaking, taking the ball, like, oh, <laughs> fuck again. <laughs> By the end, he was running backwards. Like, oh, yeah, 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 I saw that. Yeah. I saw that. I saw I was laughing. Oh, Take my kidneys. Oh, <laughs> oh, the front my. is done. The front is cooked. Honestly, I was like, what are they doing to the poor bloke? <laughs> Mate. Give it to someone. <laughs> Especially when they went two cards down and they didn't go for the scrum. I was like, whoa. Yeah, that was just insane, wasn't it? And Trevor and Kanye was already struggling. I was like, just get get into it more, pal. Oh. Yeah. If you were Gatland, how worried would you be by the strength of the opposition at the moment? Like that was that was pretty much an unofficial fourth test, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. A couple of changes, but to both sides, I'd say. But yeah, would you be worried, Zeebs? Very, 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 very worried. Yeah, <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> I'd be as well. Uh, you, you you have to be there the world champions and they had pretty much a two-year layoff and they came back and and you know not comfortably but they they were the better side you know the Lions struggled to get over the line with 13 while well, the South Africans had 13 men Um, they squeezed them they played the power game and they have a sprinkle of flair you see Colby and and these oh, guys man. out on the edges who he can just amazing. rip you at any second so I'd be very worried if I was Gatlin. You know, you're, you're, that team, you could tell that who was the world champions anyway. So, yeah. Yeah, the Lions would, would have been set there again. Oh, they'll be rusty. They'll be blown yeah. out their asses. Yeah. It'll be all no. right. And then next minute. <laughs> next minute. Shit, why yeah. can't we get over the line? There's 30 yeah. of them. Oh, <laughs> Absolute monsters. Yeah. Around the corner yeah. as well. They're just like standing still carries and they're just mm. dragging blokes. Yeah, oh, but that's it. They nuts. go in twos, eh, Max? Yeah. He literally, he will grab hold of someone with a oh. ball and just batter <laughs> bat yeah. them in through. Oh, oh God. Yeah. yeah. yeah it, it is mental. It was mental. Oh. I was talking to the boys today and I was saying the only thing like that I'm pretty disappointed is you look back 12 years ago at that South Africa, um, the, the series in South Africa 12 years ago, and you look at it like they say, like the cauldron is like in that stadium. Oh, loads no, of South African know, shirts, it's so sad. Like a sea of people screaming. Yeah. Back then, they were allowed to like bite each other, poke each other's eyes out, punch the life out of each other. Mm. Now they're going to play South Africa, and it's like all they're going to do is just get double up smashes. That's about it. Mm. But there's no yeah. real atmosphere. Like even in that game, you're just like, oh, it's such a shame there's no fans there. Mm. So that's the. I don't. I think that would have even helped the Lions. Like playing in that atmosphere actually helps, makes the occasion greater. Mm -hmm. Whereas now, yeah, no fans is just such a shame, and it does, yeah. does make you think. Why don't they? They should have. They should have done it somewhere. They could have had fans, you know. But you not think the fans would have had the same impact on the box as well for the South Africa A? So I mean, they didn't oh. seem to need any help in no, how they performed. It is, yeah. Not having, not having fans for the South Africans is doubly as hard to play against the Lions now. So obviously the Lions, you pick the elite from four countries and the only advantage this, the box would have is that crowd. So not having them is, yeah. And for them to have beaten the Lions the way they did, yeah, um, the signs wouldn't be great. 
Um, on the Lions squad, Chris Harris, apart from falling victim to Colby's magical feat, he had an incredible game. But Bundy didn't impress so much. Um, would you guys have Harris in your starting 15 next weekend? Zeb, you're the expert on the uh, backs. Um, I probably wouldn't, no. No, um, I would probably go for Robbie Henshaw at 13 and probably Owen Farrell at 12. Um, Ooh. Yeah. As long as you could have someone like Finn or Marcus Smith, either Finn or Marcus Smith, and then you'd have a second distributor in the center and, yeah, a physical one too. That's the probably that's the mix I'd probably go for. I thought Chris Harris played really well though, and he's been good, but I think Robbie's a better player. Max, what do we in agreement there? Or do you would you put yeah, him instead? Yeah, I think No, I, I no that's I, I didn't think about putting Owen Farrell at twelve. Yeah. Henshaw's the form man, though. Absolutely. You've got to get him in. Mm. Has to be in there. Or maybe not Farrell at 12, maybe someone else. But, yeah, definitely Henshaw at 13 instead of Chris. What do you, reckon, what do, what do you think of Daly at 13 at the moment? Um, yeah, he's been good. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't, I'd see him more of a full back, to be honest. Um, but he's just an incredibly talented guy. He's a utility almost. You know, he can play anywhere, wing, full back, centre. But like uh, this year, Robbie at 13 has been streets above everyone. So I would have had, I'd have him in definitely for the test team. That's and, why I reckon um, Daly will be on the bench because he can yeah, play literally, literally anywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah literally true. anywhere. Mm. Yeah. So what about um, now? What about Chesson Kobe? How good was he? Like, Zeebs, why is he just so hard to play against? His feet are electric. Uh, he's always seems to make the right decision at the right time. Um, and he's got incredible pace. So, yeah, he's got a good combination of speed and skill. And, yeah, he's one of the foreign players at the moment. His height and size doesn't seem to hinder him at all. He's He, he puts himself about and he's just a class, class player. You know, he, um, yeah, as I said, one of the best in the world. And he's showing it at the moment again. It's players like that. Uh, when you're when you're playing against them, you do mm. the wrong thing. You give them more time and space because you're panicking. You're like, just sit off, yeah, and just watch what yeah. he's gonna do. Yeah. Watch what he's gonna do. And <laughs> it's gone past yeah, you. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, you've just got to sprint towards him and dive like Maratoja did, and just miss everything. At least you've tried. <laughs> yeah. At least you've tried. Yeah. Yeah, Macca, yeah. Macca, when Maka was on, he did real well with them. Yeah, yeah. I was so surprised when Maka got him both times. I was like. No way. He yeah, had one yeah, yeah. twice. Mm. I was like, fair. But because he, I don't think he gave him as much space, but players yeah. like that, it, we're our own worst enemies. You give them more space because yeah. you're, you're worried about it. Yeah. Oh, oh. Next minute, you just sat on your heels like, oh, no, not again. Mm. I love how strong he is as well, though, for how small he is. Like, once he mm. does get into contact, you're just like, fair play, other than when yeah. Harris bumped him off. But, mate, yeah. freak show. Yeah. And a big hit on uh, Reese Summit, didn't he? Yeah, he was, it was kicking, it was the kicking ball, it. Chris. Yeah, God, it just God. looked pretty, though. It did look tasty. It but did. Yeah, it did look pretty intense. When you're kicking God, the ball, they... though, you're very vulnerable. Yeah, they kept, kept showing that. Thing, they so. kept showing that. You're like, yeah. what? Stop showing that. <laughs> Zamet's one leg kicking the ball, not yeah. looking. Of course, he's going to get a good shot on him. Well, you know what they they also kept showing was Reese Zamet's little lightning bolt in the back of his head. What did you what did you guys make of that? Now was he asking for trouble getting that put in before the, the match? Lahif will be all over that. He does. You dyed your hair pink recently, didn't you? Yeah, I, I will. I'm all for it. Lewis yeah. Reese lightning. Yeah, I think he's just he's just a young guy enjoying just living mm. his life. You know, having a great time. Mm-hmm. Like after that Wales game, I heard his DMs were busier than like <laughs> it was like crazy. He went fully viral. Like he's the Justin Bieber of like Welsh rugby. Sure, wasn't crazy. there TikTok went crazy for him as well? All yeah. the it was loads of young girls kept making TikToks about him. Yeah. Really? Yeah, no, his TikTok went completely off, mate. He went, it went nuts. He's got that kind yeah. of boyish thing going on, but he's like a freakish, freakish athlete at the same time. Razi Erasmus wanted to see a Lions versus South Africa a ma- rematch again this weekend, but he hasn't gotten his way because Gatland rejected the proposal. So do you think that that's a shame that we won't get to see another incredible game like that this weekend? Like, surely do we not want both teams to be on the top of their games when the series starts? 
Why don't think... South, South Africans play like sharks or someone like that? I think so. The I think Razi was basically saying how he wants to keep it to the tightest bubble possible. So you know, it, when you play the sharks and you play all these other teams, you risk the contamination. Oh, yeah. So that's why he was like trying to argue on medical grounds it would be the safest for the A's to play the Lions again. But well, Gatlin was having none of it. I, I think it's stupid. I think you. I think even that South Africa A, a was a little bit stupid how they put such a strong. I know they had to, but it almost becomes four tests. And I know it's not part of it, but no, I, 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 I agree with Gatland. I think, no, don't play them again. Wait until the proper test, because it almost waters down the three tests, doesn't it? Having seen what we have so far in this tour, I'd be fascinated to know, first of all, what your starting back line is. And also, have your predictions for the series changed since yesterday? I'll start with you, Max, because then we can let you go. Uh, my starting back line. Um... You don't have to say Finn, because we're... <laughs> no, I'll go... I kind of like so nine I'd go Ali Price. I feel like Connor's a bit I feel like the ball could have been a bit quicker just watching it back. I just thought like the service was slow. Mm-hmm. Um and then at ten I'd go um Watch your mouth, Ryan. I see you there. Yeah, Ryan, Very how careful. much did you pay Max to say that? Very careful. Look at nothing. Look at Zeeb. Zeeb's like. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I see. I was like, Connor could be Why I <laughs> and then uh, ten I'd go. I'd go, I'd go Finn Russell just because I want to see that. I just want to see some fruitier, fruitier footy. And then mm-hmm. 12 and 13. Yeah. Yeah, I'd go Faz, Faz and Henshaw. The, it's the back three, though, that boggles my mind. Like, they're all on such good form. It's nutty. Like, Duhan van der Merwe, the Biltong munching juggernaut, is so <laughs> fun to watch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like Ivan Drago's on the edge. Yeah. If he dies, he dies, you know. Like, yeah. It's so, so good to watch. I love watching him. But Anthony Watson's been class. Josh Allen's been class. Reese Samet, everyone's loving. Um, I'd go... I'd go do... I, I just have to get Duhan in. He's my spirit, spirit winger. Duhan van der Merwe. And Josh Adams and Anthony at 15. Oh, nice. I like it. Good man. That's me. That's me. And then go on, predictions for the series, and we'll let you go. <sighs> I reckon 2 1 to 2 1 to the Bocker. They just Ooh. look too juicy. Okay. And, and would, would you have said that before the South African A game yesterday? No, I already had them down to win it. Like, I was oh, already yeah. like, yeah, I, I just think they're just, yeah, it's so. Also, that way that the Lions play, like, Gatlin's teams are all quite like, he likes them to, like, play those unders lines, like, short unders lines. And, like, I feel like running forwards, like, some of them were actually pretty good. Like, Stinks was running some good lines and Mako getting some front football, but, like, Man, that's a hard, hard set of forwards to be running that for three tests against them. They love that kind of rugby. Like, I feel like, I think, feel like you have to stretch it and play like two sided attack against the Springboks, make them make more decisions around the breakdown. Mm-hmm. Exactly. But I think, I feel like lines are slightly predictable just in terms of that, like, middle third of the field as well. But we'll see. We'll see. What about you two now? What do you reckon? Has your predictions for the series changed? The spring box, yeah, yeah, oh. either 2 1 or 3 0. I don't know, but oh, really? Did you always say the spring box? Did you? Mm. I never thought you said the spring box. I always I thought never you had a word pro- for the lines. I never gave a prediction before. It's not, yeah, it's oh. not a bad thing. It's just, um, yeah, they have a lot going for them. Yeah, I want the lions to win, but mm. I, I think it'll be hard. I'm hesitant to say it because I don't want to say it, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I agree. I think it could swing the box away. Sadly. All right. Well, look on that, Max, we will let you go. Thank you so much for coming on and staying on for as long as you did. Um, we really appreciate it. It's great having you on. Thanks so much, guys. Anytime. Legend, I'd love to Max. get back on. It was really fun. Absolutely. The France v Australia series is now perfectly poised at 1 1 after two incredible matches with the decider this weekend. But did you guys see the incident in the first match where France somehow managed to fail to kick the ball out of play to win the match? which then allowed Australia to turn over the ball and go on to win an extra time. Was this the most embarrassing end to a game you guys have ever witnessed? It's right up there anyway. Mm. It's, uh, that was shocking, though. <laughs> that was so, so bad. Just kick the ball out. 
But if it was going to happen to one team in the world, you can bet your bottom dollar it would have been the French team. And lo and behold, they, they lost the first match. And um, yeah, it makes for an interesting final, I suppose. Um, but yeah, they'll be kicking themselves. They could have won a series in Australia with a young squad. Not to be. Right. Well, Zeebs, you will go down in Lions history for many reasons, but none more so than that brilliant video of you playing the Lions dice. So today we have decided that we will play what honorary line for Ryan Wilson. But now, Zeebs, seeing as you did forget that we were meant to be recording on Tuesday, you'll be going first. So here is what's going to happen. We are going to roll the dice virtually, and depending on where it lands, these will be the forfeits. If it lands on one, three or six, you'll have to call someone in the Lions squad and say that you're just off the phone with Gatland and you've been called into the squad. So that can be Finn or Connor. And then if you get a two or a five, you don't have to do anything. Yeah, all right with that? And if it's a two or a five, Ryan has to call someone in. No, 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 no. I, I, listen, I was there on time on Tuesday, ready with my laptop, all excited, and then new phone from the beach. I didn't realise you go down the beach in Ireland, but then from the beach. I'm very sorry there. I'm actually down the beach at the moment with the children. So because we're obviously on a massive budget, um, I've got some playing cards here. Oh, we've no dice. We actually have no dice. I can't find one. I bet has <laughs> hidden the uh, Monopoly. I don't know where she's probably taken it with her. Right, here we go. There you are. Okay. Shuffling. And I'm going to pick the top card. Can you tell me when to stop? <laughs> Hang on there now. Keep going. Um, so which cards? Two and five for me, is it? To not have one, to three, or six is, is you do the fit. Full fit. Okay, right. okay. You'll say stop. Stop. <gasps> yeah! It's a six, people! Yeah, baby. Come on, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so for those who are just listening in, uh, Zebo has selected a six, so that means he's going to have to pick up the phone now and call one of the Lions boys and let them know he's on his way over. What would I do with the microphone, though? You won't be able to... Just do that and put it there, loudspeaker. Okay. And let us see it. Who are you finding, Finn or Connor? Mm. Who's going first? Um, Finn. Hold on. Do you on. know what you're going to say? I reckon you just thought you say Anthony Watson, I've heard, has yeah. done his ankle. Anthony Watson's done his ankle, okay. Gats just Come found on. me. Gats just found me, I'm coming over. How are you doing, old Simon? Oh, how's it going, White Chocolate? How are you keeping? It's good, good. Man. I'm alright, I'm alright. It's not a real bad mood and some fucking shit that we have from my killies, but all good. Ah, how is it? You getting better? Ah, uh, getting there, getting there. Here, um, what's this? Ah, not much, just chilling down the beach and stuff like that, you know yourself. Sunny weather here in France, or in Ireland. How's, um, <laughs> <laughs> come here, how's, um, How's Anthony Watson? Did he, he pick up a knock at the, at the weekend? I think he's all right. Um, I think he got a bang, but nothing too serious, I think. I think he's all right. Oh, okay. Because fucking... How come? No, because I had a missed call there on my phone from... Um, one of the from one of the staff but it was an, i think from the lions group and a text message asking if i was able to uh take a call in an hour i think um i'm supposed to be coming over as cover i'm supposed to be coming over as cover i yeah so i i think i'm going yeah who called you i don't know who it was but i i think it's with regards to that because gatland was on to me send me an email or something <laughs> Yes. We're on it, lad. Are you, are you the no, we're on it, man. Come on, let's go. Fuck, are you joking? <laughs> now hang I'm up, not... hang up. Ah! <laughs> Fuck! I, I didn't know what to say. I panicked, man. <laughs> An email or something. <laughs> you just threw me on the spot. When he phones you, when he phones you back, so if he phones you back now, say, sorry, mate, cut out. I've got to go. I think that's them calling. Did he phone you back? Sorry, bro, you won't believe it. That's that's one of the one of the staff there. I actually have to take this call now, two minutes. Oh, good, I'll give my call after. All right, all right. Oh, Sweet, bro. bless him. He's got so much See? hope for you. I know, I know. He's a good man, all right, Chaktis. Oh, 
Oh, that oh is he'd so be good. delighted now. Thanks to Ryan Wilson, Simon Zebo, and Max Lahif. And thanks to you for listening and for all your kind words that we've been getting from everyone, especially to a lovely nurse called Leanne, who has been supporting us since episode one. So we just wanted to give her a little shout out. Um, yeah, but more often. Yeah. yeah, thank you, Leanne. She sent a lovely message to say that, um, you know, she's a nurse. She's been avoiding media over the last while, but she's listened to the podcast since episode one and we've never failed to not make her laugh. So. Um, I thought she deserved a bit of a shout out. Oh, she'll be laughing at this one, won't she, Zeebs? <laughs> I think she'll enjoy this episode. <laughs> but look, more offloading next week. Make sure to subscribe to the show wherever you get your podcasts. Leave us a rating and review if you can. And don't forget to check us out on YouTube as well. Thanks, guys. <laughs>